You're listening to The Interview Show with Seth Goldstein on the phillytech.org netcast network. Thank you to our sponsors, aweber.com, wistia.com, and getflywheel.com. Check them out today. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the interview show. I'm Seth. I'm here with Tina and Angela of Happenings Media. Um, they run a hyper-local news sites around all over the place, right, guys? Yep, nationally now. 23 sites, so, yeah, they're all locally centric, though. Our hub is really in Philadelphia, and we have another hub in New York, but we have sites from Florida to Minneapolis to California. To Minneapolis, wow. Um, California, it's even farther, wow. Yes. So you, well, I guess you've gone out to all these places, right? Um, yeah, we, we have people on the ground in each area. So we have licensees, and they basically run their own digital lifestyle magazine through Happenings Media. And we've been to a lot of the different areas. We have not been to all of them yet. Um, it's oh, just wow. so unseen. growing too fast and trying to keep up with it. Awesome. So when, when, when did this all get started? I mean, I've known you guys forever, it seems like, but when did we first get started? Well, we launched our first site in the Bucks County, Pennsylvania region, which is a suburb of Philadelphia, which is, happens to be where we're from originally. We launched that in 2009. Um, we started... Uh, out of necessity, essentially, we just felt that the network, the um, area was being underserved. So we threw it up, and the rest was history. It very quickly took off, and very quickly people asked us, um, "When were we going to be in their area?" So we spent uh, the better part of 2010 trying to decide what was the best model um, in which to expand. And in 2011, we launched the Happenings Media Network <clears throat> with licensees. Um, running our sites, we felt very strongly that we wanted um, people with street cred in our in in those regions. So slowly um, or quickly, from 20 January 2011 till today, we've gone from just the first site bucks happening to 23 nationally. Wow, 23. Yeah. And so, what's it like working with your sister? It's funny because a lot of people say to us, "How how do you work with your sister? I'd kill my sister." Um, somehow it just works for us. We have very complementary skill sets and very complementary personalities. Um, both of us agree neither of us could work with our husbands, but with our with sisters, it, it does work. Aww. Are you guys close in age? I mean, is that why? Or Yeah, we're pretty close in age. Yeah, we're not far. We're a few years apart. And like Angela said, I think we complement each other in our skill sets, and we both know what our strengths and weaknesses are and when to default to the other one. And, you know, just like any partnership, whether it's, like, in your personal life or in your professional life, I think the key is learning how to communicate. And that was something, because we are sisters, that we had a jump start on. And I think communicating for, as a business partner, you know, about two years in, I feel like there was a distinct shift in – being able to know, okay, this is a, the way to handle this. This is when to talk about it. This is when not to push about it. Right. Um, and just those little things. So it works out pretty well. I also think there's an inherent trust built in yes. with being sisters who are partners. We both know that we want the best for each other. So you never have to worry, you know, is my partner trying to stab me in the back? Are they trying to do it? Well, hopefully thing? not. Or I feel like um, – just like a marriage, you know, we are always trying to do what's best for the, for each other. And um, I have every trust level and confidence with my sister that, you know, it just comes built in, which is nice. Cool. So how does this licensee thing work? Is it sort of like a franchise or? So there are some differences between franchises and licensing, but that is something that a lot of people think of just because they're not as familiar with licensing. Um, so... Some of those differences are the level of control that the licensee has versus the parent company. So the licensing allows them to really make the best decision for their business. Um, whereas a franchise, a lot of things are more stringent. You have tighter controls over every aspect of the business. A licensing network, we do have criteria and rules that people have to follow. but 
because of the nature of the business itself, we oh, really wanted the licensing. Not as familiar with licensing. Able to. Um, so we use reverb. Someone's reverbing. Or the level of control that the licensee. But someone's someone's watching the podcast. So the license. Hold on one second. Really <laughs> make the best decision for their business. Um, Everybody's reiterating that. themselves now. <laughs> that was weird. That just popped up in a side window. Sorry about that. No big uh, deal. Hey, that's the best thing about these podcasts. They're very rough and tumble and fun. Sorry so you were saying that. that, you know, twice you were saying. <laughs> so, yeah, I was just saying that the licensees get to analyze their market and really decide what exact mo iteration of our model is going to work there. So that's one of the biggest differences. There's a bunch of little things. Um, but... Overall, with our licensees, we have people who basically come to us and they say, we see what you're doing in, you know, originally it was Bucks County and now it can be any of our markets. And they're inspired by it. They love their community. They're looking to do something similar. And we're able to give them the backbone of the business. So the, everything from the technology to the design to the business training um, we really fill in the gaps of what they don't, they aren't familiar with, and what they need training on, and then they operate the business in their own market as the publisher and business owner. Okay, so, oh, Angela, oh, no, I thought you I thought you wanted to say something. Okay. Oh, no, okay. But so, I mean, so what, like, what, what controls do you have over it versus what they have? Are you, do you, like, do you what, like, franchises, like, when you think about it, like Dunkin' Donuts, they give you the signage, they give you all other stuff. I mean, obviously, I mean, do they own the business, or do you guys own the business and they're just kind of managers? They own the business. We own the publications. So the, all of the digital properties are owned by Happenings Media and the associated social media and email and everything like that. They license the right to use those. And then they own their own business that has an agreement with Happenings Media to use those products. Mm -hmm. I got you. So I, I see that. Well, what we like to retain, which is important for us, is uh, a lot of it relates to the up to, uh, maintaining the quality of the network. So ensuring that the type of content that is um, created and published is of a high quality, original lifestyle content. Um, it's done on a regular basis. We have we have those types of um, requirements in place to ensure that no matter where you go in the country, you're getting um, a similar quality product. But then we really allow the licensee to add their flavor. Oh, very cool. So what's your background? Like, like, what did you guys study in college? Like, what made you want to start a magazine? I mean, so, you're a journalist, so, you know. Neither of us came from the journalism industry. Um, I am the older sister. Um, I graduated with a, an undergraduate degree in information systems. Um, I was an IT consultant for oh, wow. uh, I got my MBA in finance, and then I worked in um, biotech finance for a few years and had the entrepreneurial itch. Um, I actually, uh, Tina and I started a company together prior to um, happening media, and I actually also had an event planning startup, um, or still do, sort of. Um, so there was no there was no journalism industry background in in my world, um, I, I I built our sites, and um, so I, I took us from that direction. Tina, do you want to tell them your background? So I started with an undergrad in finance and marketing and started my career off working in operations at a hedge fund, and I did my MBA while I was working there in marketing. Um, so as Angela... A little bit there. Sorry? So you have a little bit there on like starting a magazine called marketing... A little bit, and I, you know, throughout, I guess, college primarily, but even before, I was always really interested in communications in general. I interned in television and at magazines, and um, when it came down to getting my first job, I think I got a little blindsided by the dollar signs in the finance world as a 22-year-old who really, you know, hadn't quite figured out exactly where I was going with my career. And very soon after, I knew that that wasn't for me. I was always passionate about communications. And what's funny is Happenings Media was so organic 
And looking back, it makes perfect sense. It's something that I feel like I was always tied into this world, and Angela's always been tied into a digital world and been very interested in that. But um, we didn't set out to get here. And I think what is one of the biggest strengths of what we've been able to build is because it's been organic, we've responded to the environment. Everything that we've created in terms of the business has been because somebody – uh, there was a need for it that already existed. So, you know, the content in the first place for Bucks Happening, there was a need for lifestyle information about Bucks County online. And as soon as we started that, people started saying, you know, where can I advertise? And then we created our products. And after that, people were saying, when can I start my business in Monco? And we created Happenings Media. So we've always tried to retain that um, spirit as we've gotten larger. But what ultimately led us to starting Happenings Media was, um, like Angela said, she, she was living in Bucks County. She moved from New York back to Bucks. And she was getting a lot of slack from people, all of you know, her cohorts in their 20s, saying, what are you doing in the suburbs? Like, there's nothing to do out there. Move back to New York. And... You know, she tells it, well, she's got very defensive. And she was like, there's so much to do in Bucks County. I love Bucks County. And that was the impetus that really got her to launch Bucks Happening. And then I soon followed after when I moved home. And because of that draw I always had to the communications world, I immediately jumped in and started writing and looking at things from more of an editorial and content perspective. And that's sort of where the partnership began between the two of us. Right. Now, do you, now do you guys still own box box happenings? Is that like your baby still? Like, is that owned by you, or did you hand that one off? No, box happening is our flagship. Um, we've always made Ooh, box County. <laughs> um, we do that for a lot of reasons. One, it's our baby. Number two, um, we use it as a prototype um, and to, a testing ground for new products, new ideas. Um, for instance, our happening list, which you're probably familiar with, is our People's Choice competition. We debuted that and tested it first in the Bucks County market and now have rolled it out to more than half of our network and by next year will be rolled out to our entire network. This just keeps us um, with our ear to the ground. Um, it keeps us in the grassroots type of mentality. Um, when we go to industry conferences, a lot of times we see media companies who have sort of gotten away from that um, grassroots type of initiative and they start just trying to, it almost feels like sometimes they're guessing at what an, an SMB uh, or small to medium sized business um, needs and wants and what we pride ourselves in is that not only do we know what they need and want but we met with them yesterday. Um, so we is a big reason why we keep Bucks happening in-house. That being said, we have um, hired uh, in-house um, uh, help. You know, we have some writers and we have uh, some video uh, BHTV anchors uh, and some sales help so uh, that we can both manage the network and also manage Bucks happening. Very cool. So um, also, how does like, the whole ad, I mean, you know, Philly Tech is, you know, a new upstart. We're back where you guys were in 2009, just kind of getting okay. started. Um, how, like how for advice for me for you know for an upstart you know podcast network what you know whatever you want to call it how would you go about like getting like getting your first sponsors and how do you know how to price that for people who are interested in like this kind of stuff? So that's a really interesting question because I think the timing of when we started from 2009 to today. It's been such a shift. The world in 2009 was so different than, especially in the small local environment, than it is today. So when we first started, like I mentioned earlier, we were very organic. So we sat down with small businesses and we talked to them and we said, what are you frustrated with? What are your needs? What are your goals? What, you know, where do you need help? And we created these integrated marketing campaigns for people just because that was what the environment needed. In, at the same time, the whole industry was shifting that direction, but we were on the ground level, and like Angela said, we didn't come from media backgrounds, so it was really funny to see how things we were arriving at organically matched what was happening to the industry at large. 
So we started um, very early on doing sponsored content when that wasn't something that was so common. So our biz, our core was always built on like a native advertising. We do have a, a variety of products. So we sell banner ads and um, sponsored articles and sponsored features on the site and email marketing and social media marketing and videos. Um, but we really take the approach that you need to understand the needs of the client and then make the recommendations to them of the products that fit for them. Um, so most of our clients are purchasing a combination of products in a campaign. Oh, very cool, very cool. Well, actually, let's take a quick break. Thank our sponsors, Aweber, um, Get Flywheel, and uh, Wistia. They're our sponsors. I have yet to kind of figure out how to work them into a podcast like this, but I want to thank them for sponsoring us, and we'll get back to the show. I'll figure that. I'll figure out how to work that into an interview show eventually. But they're they're pretty they're pretty good at saying yeah, figure it out. You know, we're good we're good with it. But check them out. Aweber.com. Getflywheel.com. If you go to flywheel.com, it's an app, travel app. So it's getflywheel.com. They're our host. Um, and Wistia is our video host, W-I-S-T-I-A.com. So, all right, back to the show. <laughs> uh, I've got to do our advertising, pay the bills, right? <laughs> so um, like, what's the, what's the future hold for you guys? Like, like what, what, where do you, what, what's your ambition? Like, do you want to be in Canada next? Do you want to be in Europe? Like, it's important for us to continue to grow on all fronts. So over the next five years, you'll con continue to see happening mags um, grow, uh, pop up where in in communities all across the the country. Um, you'll also continue to see different. Uh, well, each site continue to grow. That's a very important um, concept for us to make sure that our licensees are receiving top notch support from us so that they are um, becoming more and more successful. And you'll also start to see, you know, we do, a, I believe we do a, an amazing job for our advertisers, as Tina was mentioning, with integrative, mar integrated marketing campaigns. We're mostly at the, um, at the local business level. As we grow, though, we're working with some larger and larger advertisers, and we have some really interesting um, opportunities for the advertiser who wants a specialized local um, advertisement or marketing campaign in our specific markets. So you'll see us grow in all different areas. Yes, that's kind of cool. So you can actually, I mean, since you have a bunch of in the Philadelphia area, they could be sponsoring a bunch of different, or sponsoring, they could be advertising in a bunch of different happening mags in the area. Right, and it's beyond, really for us, it's beyond marketing. Um, we like to work with those clients to make sure that we're delivering a message that resonates with whichever niche they are looking for. So whether that means sponsoring a, a singles column that uh, we, you know, we have single in the suburbs. If they're trying to reach their singles audience, we can um, connect our sponsor to that audience. If they're trying to get to um, the people who just got engaged, uh, they, we can... Um, do a really cool campaign for people who um, have written, have local love stories. We have all kinds of ways for our uh, multi-site, we call them multi-site advertisers, mm -hmm. to really get um, a message out that is interesting, viral, shareable, and interactive. Oh, very cool. That's awesome, guys. Well, thank you for being on the show. I mean, I'm thrilled to have you guys on here. You guys are definitely the ones that I want to get on because well, you know you're in the part of the startup, like right after 2008. You know, the you know kind of what we all aspire to be. You know, and, and get out there and build something bigger than yourselves. It's pretty cool. So, I well, guess we're excited. Yeah, so we'll have to check you out. Where Where is the best place to find out more about you guys? So you can go to happeningsmedia.com. That will connect you to all of our 23 sites and give you a little bit more information about our team and our advisors and our licensees. So that's the best place to go. And then social media, follow us on Twitter, find us on Facebook, Google+. Plus. Um, we're, we're all over the web. Awesome. Great, guys. So this has been the interview podcast, interview show. Um, check back next week for more great interviews. Thank you. Bye.